Hello, Professor. Can you help me, please? I am confused with the Hardy Weinberg formula. I think it is because I am from Texas. Nobody is perfect, my boy. Obviously, I am, but, but yes, I can help you because I am smart. Can you not tell from my British accent? It automatically makes me smart. The first thing you have to remember about the Hardy Weinberg formula is that everything in it equals to 1. Whether it is concerning alleles or frequencies, it has to equal to 1 or 100%. Second, we have to remember that the Hardy Weinberg principle states that allele and genotype frequencies in a population have to remain constant from generation to generation in the absence of other evolutionary influences in order for the formula to apply. These influences include non-random mating, mutation, selection, genetic drift and gene flow. Because one or more of these influences are typically present in real populations, the Hardy-Weinberg principle describes an ideal condition against which the effects of these influences can be analyzed. By the way, Miss Mustache and Mullet. Oh? Okay. It is starting to make sense. A little. Well, let's do a problem. When we are trying to find an allele we use the formula P plus Q equals 1. Let's say you want to find out how many soulless gingers there are in the population. Gingers? What is that professor? You know, redheads. Oh yeah. So you are trying to find how many gingers there are in the population. Q, in the P plus Q equal 1 formula, is the allele for the homozygous recessive gene that makes you a ginger. And P will be the homozygous dominant gene that makes you a normal human being. Okay. So let's say there are 20 genes in a pool. And 6 of the 20 genes are of the recessive allele type. 6 divided by 20 would give you 0.3, or 30%. This would mean that 30% of that specific population would be homozygous recessive for being a ginger freak. Ah. Ain't no my boy, scary. So now that we have figured out the Q is 0.3, we can plug it into the formula. P plus 0.3 equals 1. We would subtract 0.3 from both sides and we will be left with 0.7, or 70%. So this specific population is very lucky and they have good odds of being a normal person and not a weird, freckled mammal. I have nightmares about them sometimes. Them gingers. Me too my son, me too. Okay, so what about the other formula? The P squared plus 2 times PQ plus Q squared. I was getting to that my Texas son. So now that we have figured out the alleles, we can plug them into this formula. P was 0.7 and Q was 0.3. When we squared those P would equal to 0.49 and Q would equal 0.09. We then move on to the middle of the equation and multiply 2 times 0.7, times 0.3, it would give us 0.42. Oh. Yes, simple my dim-witted Texas friend. When we take 0.49 plus, 0.42, plus 0.09, it would give us an answer of 1. Thus, making that the correct answer. Simple as that my friend. Thank you professor, you are the coolest British dude I know. Wow thank you. Yeah I also have the straightest smile that I have seen on any British person. Um, thank you. No problem professor. Thanks again.